section called the Dumas theorem and the nth roots. Okay. So it starts out with the complex plane. So this is actually what the third plane we talked about, right? Because we talked about the rectangular plane, right? Cartesian, the x and the y. And then we talked about the polar plane, right? The r and the theta. Today we're going to talk about the complex plane. The complex plane is pretty simple, really. It's kind of the same thing as the, uh, excuse me, the uh, vector plane. It's a, it's like this will be the real axis, and this will be the imaginary axis, because a complex number, as we all know, it looks like this, a plus b i. Right. So the real and the imaginary. So if I had two minus I, that would be two and then down one, right? Two minus one, that would be two minus one. Right? This is the complex plane, complex numbers, okay? Okay, so in theory, right, the complex numbers or imaginary numbers have no meaning, right? Because they do not exist. They're imaginary, right? We imagine these things, okay? Yet when we're dealing in the plane, we do have a magnitude here, okay? We have a magnitude. And obviously this is the, as you would have guessed, it looks like this, right? We actually call this the modulus or argument, some fancy terms here, okay? The modulus or the argument, right? And then, so wait a minute, what are we gonna talk about this? Okay, ooh, no, it's not the argument, it is the modulus or the absolute value, I'm sorry. Modulus or the absolute value, absolute value, okay. as you would think, I mean, it's same as if you had a real number, right? If you had a two and a negative one, the magnitude here, what you would have calculated this way, right? The same thing, so it's exactly the same thing. Okay, so let's kind of do some review with this. So if I had two complex numbers, how would I add this? It would just be two minus four and plus two minus four plus five i minus i five minus i so it would be four i correct so you'd have to you add the i's together and you add the real numbers together right okay pretty simple okay how let's say I'm gonna do the multiplication here. How would I multiply them? Well, you would just you would just distribute it out, right? You would distribute it out. So two times that, two times that, this times that, this times that would be negative five i. Then we multiply these guys with so minus five i squared. Okay, so you would go. What is the negative i squared here? Negative one. i squared is negative one. So negative i squared would be? Five. So this would be just five, right? Because it's negative five times negative one, right? So this would be five. Add that to that, I would have negative three, 10. Ooh, what happened here? The, the second to last one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we would add these together would be 49. This is how you multiply. So we did this in the P chapter. Okay. So last, last but not least, let's go ahead and see if we can do this. Yeah, this is the hard one. Okay, this is the one nobody likes to do. 
How did I do this? I multiplied the top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. Conjugate is the, I just flip this sign here, okay? So it's negative four plus five. The conjugate of that is negative four minus five i. And then I so if I multiply it on the bottom, I have to also multiply it on the top. Right? So we would do this part. Let's do the top part. Negative eight. Negative ten. Plus four. Plus five. Does anybody understand why I brought plus five there? Because it's negative five i squared, right? Okay. To the bottom, the bottom, I would do this. At the bottom, I get negative or plus 16. When I do this, I get plus 20i, negative 20i, they cancel out. Again, I have here, I'm going to have plus 5. So I'm going to have 21 over negative 3 minus 6i. Then I can further go ahead and go negative one, negative two i over seven. Remember doing this? This is not new. This is new, Hunter? Okay. Anybody else, is this new? We did it a while ago. Barely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's back there somewhere, right? Okay. All right. So this is how you do the div division. Okay, so this is a brief kind of review of how to manipulate complex numbers. For example, number one on page 502. Example number one, it just shows that if I have a one plus three i and two minus i, I add them together, I'm going to get three plus two i. And those three associated along with the origin are going to form a parallelogram, which makes sense, right? Because if, if you think about it in vectors, if you were vectors, when you add vectors, we did the head to tail method, right? right? It's the same thing here, right? This would be the end result, right? When you add this plus this, if I add this vector plus that vector, it would become that vector. It's the same thing here. When I add this complex number to this complex number, I guess this complex number, and they do in fact form a parallelogram. Let me flip the page. Let's go to page 504. There's a definition there the absolute value or the modulus. We'll talk about that. Okay. Now there's a midpoint and distance formula in the complex plane. They're about the same as what they're trying to say there. So let's not worry too much about that. Let's go ahead and move on to the polar form of complex numbers. So a complex number, two minus i, well, let's say, okay, let's. Try to be consistent with the book here. If I have a complex number that looks like this, right, I can actually write this in a polar form. Okay, so if I have a plus bi here, I know that this can also, I can represent this as. giving you the R here form already? Did R cosine theta? Yeah. Okay. R cosine theta plus I sine theta, which is the same as R cosine theta plus I R sine theta. What you're saying is that A, this A here is the same as R cosine theta if this is R and this is theta. Can we see that? Can you repeat that sentence? So if this is R, if this is the modulus, 
okay? This right here is going to be our cosine theta, okay? This guy up here is going to be our sine theta, and therefore A plus BI can be represented as R cosine theta plus I times R sine theta. So this would be R sine theta on the triangle? It's right here. This is R sine theta, this is R cosine theta. Oh, so there's no imaginary number. Still imaginary number because it was an I. Okay. So this is the polar form. So if we, when I pull the R out, I get this. So this is what we call the polar form of the complex number A plus BI. Okay. It's the, it's the polar form of A plus BI. Okay. And if you look in the middle of page 504, or the bottom part, shows you the polar form. And where again, the R is the absolute value or the modulus. And theta is now the argument. So theta here is the argument. Okay, so if you think about it, you think about this. When you pull the R out, what is the magnitude of this? It's cosine squared theta plus I squared theta, squared theta the square root of that, right? which is basically the square root of one because cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one, right? You remember that? So this is, so this is going to be always going to be a unit thing. Then there, the, the modulus here is going to be one. The magnitude is going to be one here. So this is actually the magnitude here. So this is going to, R is going to be equal to what? Square root of A squared plus B squared. Right. Whereas the tangent theta is going to be equal to B over A, right? Because tangent theta is this guy over this guy. Okay. So the interesting thing is that so let's, oh, let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and try to let's go ahead and uh, see if we can practice how to do this transformation or put the regular form into polar form. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and look at example number two. I have a one minus root three i. Okay, so this, we want this to end up being in this form. So let's find the R first. How do I find the R? Well, three, right? So I square this, I'm gonna square this. Two, right? So this is gonna be the same as two, one half minus root three i. I need to find a theta or an argument where the cosine is this and the sine is this. Does that make sense? But compare this to this, right? So I need to find the, the argument, the theta, where the cosine theta is one half, sine theta is going to be negative root three over two. So first of all, which quadrant is going to be in? Because the cosine is positive, the sine is negative. Be the fourth quadrant, right? Fourth quadrant, because fourth quadrant, the cosine is positive, the sine is negative. So be the fourth quadrant. So what would it be? So it's going to be what? It's two pi minus one third pi, right? Yes, sir. Um. Right? So this would be the polar form 
of this guy. Okay, so you remember the steps here. First, I find the magnitude, pull the magnitude out and divide it out and, and pull the magnitude out and see what I have left. Then I have to find the theta. Okay, let's do it one more time. This one is negative three, negative four. Let's find the R first. R is going to be equal to what do I get? Five, right? Five. Pull the five out. Okay. So I need to find, so what quadrant am I in? Cosine's negative, sine's negative. Third quadrant, sine, third quadrant. Okay, if I go ahead and find the arc tangent of negative four over negative three, what do I get? You have to know your calculator for your arc tangent thing. If you do that, you're gonna get 0.927. So this is in radians. Okay, so this would be if you're in the first quadrant, right? So this is obviously the first quadrant, right? So you're gonna have to add another pi to this, right? To put it into the third quadrant. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna have to add a pi to that, which is 3.14 okay. So this is going to be five cosine 4.068 plus I sine 4.068. So should we add the pi because it's above any degree? No, because if you 0.927 in radians is somewhere over here. The angle that I'm looking for is somewhere over here. Third quadrant, right? So I had to add pi to whatever I found, okay? All right, so that's that. Uh, okay, now let's go to the really interesting thing. And that's on page 505, where it says multiplication and division of this whole other form. And this is really the whole crux of the whole reason of doing the polar form. Because some very interesting things happen here. So if I had z1 is equal to r1 cosine theta1 plus i sine theta1, and z2 is equal to r2 cosine theta2 plus i sine theta2, Z1 times Z2, remember when we had them in not polar form, regular form, we had to actually distribute them out, right? D plus PI, C plus DI, and I had to distribute it out. The cool thing here is that when I multiply, multiply this, I just have to multiply these two. I'm gonna add the arguments. So it's a one step. Boom, I'm done. Okay, so this is where the power of the polar form comes, especially when you're dividing. Oh, this is Z2. Z1 divided by Z2, R1 cosine theta1, I sine theta1 over R2 cosine theta2, I sine theta2. It's going to be equal to R1 over R2. Then I'm going to subtract the arguments. Okay. 
again, see how simple that is? Remember how, how arduous it was for us to do this? Like when we had, what was it? Two minus I over, remember how hard this was, <laughs> right? It's pretty hard, right? But when you put it in a polar form, all I have to do is divide the magnitudes and then just subtract the argument and you're done. Now, here's another thing. You see how tedious it was for me to write this out every single time, right? So, to this is written You ready for this? Is I R cosine theta. That's how I do it. Um, let me make sure. Let me make sure. Does the book even have this? No. So this is how it's abbreviated. Okay. R I cosine theta. And you can see why, right? Because this is always going to be the same whether it's sine or cosine. And this just kind of reminds you that there is a it's a complex number. Okay. So the sign disappears. So this will be uh-huh. R2. Like that. We'll cosine. Cosine. Uh-huh. Just letting you know. Okay, so that's that. Blah, blah, blah. We're done with that. Done with that. Let's go to example number three. See if we can actually use this. Okay, Z1 is. Twenty-five root two i cosine negative pi over four z two is equal to fourteen. Uh, I think it's okay. It's i sine. Never mind. It's i sine. Not cosine. It's sine. Same difference. Okay, and would they want us to multiply this or divide this? What are we doing here? Approximate exact values in the calculator where appropriate. So it looks like we're multiplying. Okay. So I multiply this like in Z1, Z2 is equal to, I just multiply these two together, 14 times 25 root 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and say sign, add these two together. Does anybody know what I, what do I get if I add these two together? Add the arguments together. If it was plus, oh, yeah. then it's negative. So I would tell, right? Are we good? For those of you who are kind of hungry or have a headache. Right? Okay. If I ever call, right? So then you would just go ahead and do this out, right? So you'd be, this would be 350 root 2 cosine pi over 12 plus i sine pi over 12. And you just put this in your calculator and you just write it through, right? Okay. Example number four. We're going to divide. Of course, they're going to give you two different numbers now. 
the mummy would want to see you rewrite this whole thing all over again. Example number four. Z1 is equal to two root two I sine 135. Oh, now I'm gonna throw in some degrees to add us. And then I have six I sine 300 degrees Z1 over Z2. 2 root 2 over 6. I divide this to this, and this I just subtract out, right? I sine 135 minus 300 degrees. And you can just do that too. Okay. Again, you see the beauty of the polar form. Okay. This is why we use it, because you can do things like manipulations like this. And we will stop right here, let you guys recharge a little bit, and then we'll work on the actual demos too.